this is the story of a man who works as a nurse at a hospital and the patients are left at his mercy. Let's see how he goes on to victimize them. Today's video we will be going through the 2022 movie, The Good Nurse. The movie starts and we are taken to 1973 where we see a nurse named Charlie, who is checking in on a patient who does not seem to be in a good state. As the doctors walk inside the room Charlie moves away from the patient. As they look on, the patient dies. We see that Charlie pretends to be sad about the dead patient but he has a sense of satisfaction deep down in his brain. The scene then shifts to 2003 Parkfield Memorial Hospital. We see a woman named Amy who looks after one of her old patients named Anna Martinez. Amy is a single mother and a nurse who usually works in the intensive care unit of the aforementioned hospital. We then go on to learn that she is suffering from cardiomyopathy, but unbeknownst to anyone at the hospital, in fear of dismissal due to having no health insurance, Amy has no other choice than to remain working for another four months, in order to acquire the insurance to afford a heart transplant. When she tries to turn over the patient, she finds it hard to breathe herself but manages to somehow keep it together for the sake of her job. When she makes her way home, she sees her kids one is a girl named Alex and the other is named Maya. Later on, she still does not feel well, so, she goes to see her personal doctor who goes on to tell her that she could very much die in a matter of a few months if she does not get a heart transplant as soon as possible. He tells the woman to stop working right away and to get some rest. She however cannot do that because she has bills to pay paying, kids to feed and on top of that her insurance is yet to come in. The next day when she goes to the hospital, she sees that the hospital has recruited an experienced nurse Charles Cullen to help her work the night shift. As the two get the talk Charlie goes down to mention that he has some experience working alongside female nurses, because he used to work with a nurse named Lori at another hospital. It turns out that Lori is Amy's friend and they are both happy to have a mutual friend. They then get to check on Anna Martinez. We see that both of them are really good at their job and happen to know their way around the patient their bedside manners are great. When it's time to have dinner Charlie says that he forgot to bring his dinner and Amy goes on to offer him to share hers. Charlie then goes on to tell her that he too has two kids however he and his wife are separated so the kids live with their mother. As they chat Amy is called by a patient but Charlie tells her that he is going to take care of it. Amy is really impressed by him and she is happy to have a nice partner at work. When she goes home that day, Alex goes on to throw a tantrum about not having nice shoes. She goes on to say that her shoes are absolutely crappy and she never gets to have anything nice. On top of that she is also frustrated because she feels like she does not get to spend any time with her mother anymore. Amy has no answer for her because she has to work because she is the only breadwinner of the family. The next day when she's at work Amy starts to have trouble breathing yet again and she finds it hard to manage her heart rate. When she sees that no one is watching her she starts grasping for air desperately trying to get it together. Charlie sees her in this situation and goes on to help her get relaxed he knows that something is wrong with her. So, she decides to trust him telling about her illness. She however goes on to request him to keep it a secret and he agrees telling her that he totally understands. Charlie then goes on to add that he is going to help her keep everything a secret and he is also going to help her with work so that she has less exertion to do until her insurance kicks in and she can get surgery. As time goes on, Charlie and Amy start to get close to each other and he shows concern for her. He at times even goes on to give her his jacket showing that he genuinely cares for her. They then start to spend more and more time with each other. After a few days they go on to learn that Anna Martinez has died out of nowhere. Charlie shares the story of how his mother died out of nowhere adding that even her body was lost for a few hours. He says that his dead mother's body was eventually found but they did not give it any respect. He goes on to add that it is important for him to treat the dead bodies with respect and care so that they can leave this world with dignity. Amy then goes on to tell Anna's husband about his wife's passing and he is devastated to learn about this because he did not see it coming at all. We then notice that Charlie has been looking at the body very closely and this is when the police show up. The detectives make their way to the hospital saying they are going to investigate the passing of the woman out of nowhere. They see Linda the manager at the hospital who is not happy at seeing a patient's death being investigated at her hospital. Because according to her it could put the reputation of the hospital on the line. Two detectives named Tim and Danny show up and they learn that the woman's body has already been cremated without the family being even aware. The scene then changes to Charlie who is at Amy's house is with Alex. As he tries to help the kid memorize the lines of her play, we see that he has been spending some quality time with the kids and they have started to enjoy his company. 
As well back at the hospital the detective named Danny is immediately wary of the situation noting that they reported Martinez's death seven weeks after its occurrence after the body had been cremated. He fixates on Charlie and discovers that he had been convicted of minor charges in 1995. They then go on to check the man's file and there is a note that says Dijoxin on his file. Danny is now sure that there is something wrong here. They then decide that they are going to ask questions to anyone from the hospital staff. Linda goes on to Warner's staff telling them that they can be questioned by the detectives but they will not be questioned, until she herself or at least her lawyer is also present there. She goes on to tell them that they should also care about patient confidentiality while answering the questions. Danny and Tim are pissed about how Linda has been handling things and they say that she should not be present when they question the staff because they are going to be nervous when their boss is around. When it begins, they call Amy because she has been the one who has been taking care of the dead woman. When Amy is inside Linda goes out of the room and the detectives now happen to have a free hand. Denny then goes on to show her some papers and she learns that the woman's glucose level was disturbingly high when she died. They tell her that the woman was given a high dose of insulin despite the fact that she is not diabetic. Linda then gets back to the room and Amy is then asked a few questions about Charlie. However, she goes on to say that it cannot be done by Charlie because he is a good man and on top of that even if they look at it practically it does not make sense because the woman died in the day and Charlie had been working night shifts alongside her. That day Amy is with Charlie when she feels bad and she needs meds right away. Charlie goes on to steal some for her and even tells her how there's a glitch in the system that allows you to do it. Danny and Tim on the other hand go on to look into Charlie's history again they however have not been so lucky. Linda then goes on to give them the med report of the deceased patient, but it is not enough when they ask her she goes on to lie to them saying that their system only has records of the last four weeks and that's how it works. Danny is sure that there are missing pages and Linda is trying to hide something from them. Linda takes it casually and gets up to leave but Danny now loses it he goes on to tell her that enough is enough adding that she better take it seriously or she could end up getting into some serious trouble. We then see Amy with another patient named Kelly and her husband is also there, she now takes care of them. Charlie then comes to talk to her and tells her that he is sick of his ex-wife because she has not been letting him see his kids. He says that his wife has also made up a story to defame him where she has been telling people that he poisoned their dog. Danny on the other hand gets a clear report which says that insulin was indeed found in the deceased woman's system. Danny and Tim are however discharged from the case as their supervisor shows up and tells Danny that he is not allowed in the hospital anymore because he yelled at Linda. Later that night Amy is with Kelly when she goes on to notice that the woman's condition is deteriorating with each passing moment. When she checks she sees that there is insulin in her system as well Kelly dies after a while and Amy goes on to give the shocking news to the management. Charlie looks on as Amy talks to her superior and Amy now does not feel good about what has been going on. One of the detectives then goes on to see Amy after a few days but this time he sees her at work she goes on to ask them if they are there to talk about Kelly but it turns out they do not even know about her. Adding that they are there to talk about Anna when they ask her questions about Charlie she still goes on to defend him. She says that if the man had a bad record, he would not have gotten the job at this hospital either. Amy now thinks that there could be something since the detectives have been saying it again and again. That all the hospitals where he worked, they seem to be hiding something about him. So, she goes on to see her friend Lori and tries to keep her distance from Charlie too. She asks her about Charlie and she tells her that when he used to work there the patients were dying frequently and insulin was the reason however when he left the hospital the deaths have been way less frequent she says that they found insulin in the saline bags. Amy right away goes to her hospital and checks the saline bags and she finds out that the bags have been injected with insulin. When she learns this, she is shocked and collapses right there. When she wakes up she finds Charlie sitting beside her and she is scared now. She realizes that she could very much be his next victim and he could have tampered with her saline bag as well. Amy says that she wants to go home but Charlie tells her that it is better that she stays at the hospital. Amy tries to get Charlie off her back but he stays at her side. She finally gets to go home and goes on to tell the detective what she found out about Charlie in the saline bags being injected with insulin. She then keeps an eye on him and notices that he has been using the insulin frequently and it goes into the blood of the patient at a slow pace so that no one is able to notice the reaction. And this is how the killer gets away with it. Upon being asked she tells the detectives that she is going to help them she then adds that Linda lied to them adding that the computer does not erase anything and it has all the records of the patients. They then go on to get the warrants to dig up the body of the woman named Kelly. 
so that they could do a full autopsy on her body to find clear evidence. When they go to look in on it, it reveals a dual combination of insulin and digoxin led to her death. On the other hand, Amy starts to keep a close eye on Charlie and she keeps changing the saline bags that are attached by him. She then goes on to get the full report and they match the time and the day to when Charlie mixed Kelly's saline bag with insulin. These meds however have been cancelled on the computer so they cannot use this evidence to charge him. Meanwhile Linda fires Charlie under the pretext of minor discrepancies found in his resume. Danny is pissed off when he learns that the man was fired from his job and the hospital management is still trying to cover his crimes just to save their name. Danny goes on to say that if it kept going on like this Charlie is just going to get a job at some other hospital and he could keep going on with his crime and people will keep getting killed in an attempt to entice Charlie into disclosing his actions. On the other hand, Tim and Danny have Amy arrange a meeting with him but he reacts aggressively when she asks about his dismissal from Parkfield he goes on to tell her that he has already found another job adding that, he is going to be going there from today. When he gets out of the diner the police arrest and hold him but are unable to get him to confess on record unwilling to see him released Amy volunteers to talk to Charlie. She has a warm conversation with him and asks that, he tells the truth after some deliberation Charlie confesses stating that he simply did it. When Amy asks why, he says he kept doing it because they didn't stop him. On screen text at the end of the movie reveals Charlie was sentenced to 18 consecutive life sentences for the murders of 2029 patients but the actual number could be as high as 400. Amy got the heart surgery she needed and now lives in Florida with her daughters and grandchildren. Subscribe to watch more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.